Hello there, it's the Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, I love the Ducati Panigale, so when I say things that I hate about the bike, take that with a bit of a pinch of salt. But no bike is perfect, is it? So uh, as much as I love the Panigale, uh, there are things about it that uh, aren't that great. So stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you my top five things that, uh, well, I don't quite like about the Panigale. Okay, so to number five on my list of the top five things that I hate about the Ducati Panigale, and this one only applies to this particular model, the 899 in red, and that is the lack of paint lacquer that they put on the machine. Now, to my mind, it's absolutely nuts that they, uh, Ducati let a bike out without lacquer on the paint, a protective surface. It's a beautiful bike, thing of beauty, and the paint uh, finish is absolutely lovely. It looks wonderful. But uh, many, many owners of 899 Panigales have uh, complained about scratches on the tank from their knees, um, stone chips on the fairings and so on. And so when I bought this bike, which was about seven months or so ago now, uh, the first thing that I did, or one of the very first things I did before I even took it out on the road, was to get it covered in a paint protection film. And in fact, I, I did a video on that. I'll put a link up uh, to that just in case you're interested. Um, and the paint protection film hopefully keeps it looking nice and spangly. And if I get any um, scratches or dings, I just replace the film. I don't have to replace um, the paint itself. But that is just rubbish, isn't it? That you buy a premium bike, well, let's get past him right now. And you have to worry about protecting the paint before you actually go out and ride it. So it's relatively easy to put right, but um, that is a nuisance. So number five on my list is the lack of lacquer. See what we did there? Uh, on, the, on the 899 in red. I understand the white has lacquer, the 1299 has it, the 1199 had lacquer, but not the 899. So if you're going to go for red, and let's face it, if you can have a decap that you really have to have red, then uh, you've got to do something about protecting the paint. That's number five on the list. So to number four on my list of the top five things I hate about the Ducati Panigale, uh, and this would have been number one. Uh, and also to be fair, it's not just specific to the uh, Panigale, but number four on my list of uh, pet hates is comfort. Uh, let's face it, no sports bike really is comfortable. Although I understand from uh, talking to people that have ridden all sorts of sports bikes that these actual Panigales are actually quite, uh, quite comfy as sports bikes go. And I have to say, now I've got used to it, I've been riding it for seven months since I bought it, uh, I actually don't find it uncomfortable. My bones and my muscles have got used to it, and I could ride this all day long uh, and not get off feeling in too bad a shape, I think. I haven't ridden it all day long, I'll have to do that and try it out. But, uh, but I don't dread getting on it like uh, I thought I might do, and uh, I don't feel all sore and bad once I get off the bike. So, uh, so it's not a big deal anymore, but it's certainly not up there with comfort as, say, my Street Triple or my GS. Of course, completely different types of bikes, but uh, but comfort is, I guess, an issue on the list. Okay, I'm, I'm clutching at straws a bit for these top five things, let's be honest. Okay, so number four on this is comfort, uh, or lack of comfort, I should say, on the Panigale. This is somewhere I don't come very often on the sports bike. It's absolutely lovely down here. I don't think I've ever brought you guys down here before brings you into the village of Little Missenden. Lovely little spot as you'll see in a minute. Anyway, I digress. So we're up to number three on my list of things that uh, I hate about the Panigale. Uh, number three on the list, again not specific to Panigale I guess, other bikes suffer from this and in fact my street triple suffers more but it still is a bit of an issue on the Panigale and that is the turning circle. Uh, it's fine when you're riding the bike, normally. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. What a beautiful spot, isn't it? Sorry, where was I? Yes, the turning circle on the bike. It's, uh, you know, it's a bit jumbo jet-like. So if you're on the driveway or you're in the garage and you want to manoeuvre the bike, you have to have plenty of room to do it. Um, it's a bit of a nuisance when you're in the garage with other bikes around. I usually just have to move all the other bikes out of the way before I can get this one out. So, uh, practically, turning circle is a bit of an issue for when you're lugging her around. Uh, and that makes number three on the list. As I say, when you're riding it, not a problem. You're not going to turn around and do a U-turn in the middle of the road. But, um, but certainly when you're moving it around the driveway, turning circle is wide on these things. That's number three on the list. Okay, so we're getting to the serious ones now then. We're up to number two on my top five list of things I hate about the Ducati Panigale. Right. Go a bit quickly. It's one of the things I don't hate about it. 
performance is fantastic. Anyway, I digress. So number two on the list then of things I hate about this Paddy Paddy Darling is, uh, and this is specific to me, well it may not be specific to me, is the uh, rusty chain issue that I had with the bike. Now I have posted videos on this before and uh, you can check those out. I'll put a link on this video as well if you're interested. But after just a month of ownership of the bike, having not ridden it much at all, not ridden it in the rain, it being kept in the garage, my chain started to go rusty. Uh, I lubricated it, cleaned it, lubricated it, and then with it again a few, uh, just a couple of weeks, it was going rusty again. Uh, and whatever I did, I just couldn't stop it going rusty. What a nuisance. So after much head scratching and uh, negotiation with the dealer, in the end I managed to get it swapped out for a different chain, a non-OEM chain. Um, and I've got a DID gold chain on here now and it's had absolutely no issues with it at all, it doesn't rust at all, everything is fine. But again, as the original equipment went rusty, uh, for no good reason, that's really, really poor. A bit like that issue I said before about the lack of paint lacquer. Um, I guess these bikes being exotic and Italian, you know, they look absolutely fantastic. It's a bit like a beautiful Italian woman, isn't it? I mean, if you're going to have something that looks that gorgeous and you're going to be that darn lucky, you've got to put up with some bits of rubbish that comes with them as well don't you so uh, you know I guess it's all part of the ownership experience and when you get into these things um, you just have to accept that that's that's going to be the case but uh, let's face it the looks and the joy of owning the thing and riding it again like an Italian beautiful woman uh, more than make up uh, those little foibles and things that maybe make them harder to live with so uh, that's number two on my list the rusty chain issue that I have Smelling good. Got the white thank you. Okay, so as we uh, roll back into uh, my hometown of Great Missing, splendid little place that it is, we get to number one on my list of things I hate about the 899 Caligari. So, number one is, pausing there for the drum roll, this here, the indicator switch come mode selector. Number one, as an indicator switch, it's a bit fiddly. It's not very, when you have your gloves on and you use it, it's not that positive compared to other um, indicators that I've used. It's, um, it's not very tactilely positive to know that you've definitely got it indicated. So that's number one. And then the other thing is, the button in the middle that you use to cancel the indicators uh, is also the mode selection button. Now selecting riding modes on here is a bit more complicated than say on my GS where you just use a button and then press the clutch and you're in that mode. On here you have to select the mode by pressing this button uh, and then you have to hold the button in to select it and then you have to press the clutch to engage it. So it's not a big deal once you get used to that. Um, but the problem I have with it is I have a bit of a personal habit of, of pressing that button quite often just to make sure my indicators aren't on. Um, it's just an old habit I've had since I learnt to ride. Um, and so on this bike I'm, I'm often pressing it and getting into sort of mode set mode, if that makes sense. Um, so that's a bit of a flipping nuisance and that, that annoys me all the time. Not so much the fact that it's going into mode set mode because it times out after a while and that's not a problem. But just the fact it's a bit fiddly and often I have to look at my thumb to see where I'm where I'm going to go and indicate and that's just not, not safe is it for riding. So that's number one on my list, the, the fiddly indicator switch on the Ducati 899 Panagari. Oh the restaurants in Great Liston are smelling lovely today. Okay, so there we have it. That's my uh, top five list of things I hate about the 899 Panigale. And uh, like I said, absolutely fantastic bike. I mean, when I say hates, they're really mine and niggles. So uh, do take it all with a bit of a pinch of salt. Uh, please don't flame me for saying I hate the 899, because I plainly don't. I love the bike. I bought it. I intend to keep it and uh, ride the pants off it over the next few years. Okay, hope that's been of uh, some interest to you. And uh, look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missing and Flyer. Cheerio.